What is going on everybody, Zonic here, and in today's video, I'm going to be diving into some teams that you guys can bring into day one of the new season, as it is September 1st, and the new season is going to be starting on Tuesday, September 3rd. So it's time to start uh, taking a look at some teams. There's been a big meta shakeup, if you guys haven't seen that already. I do have videos covering that on the channel, whether it's all the move updates or maybe my top 10 Pokemon that I'm looking at. There's a lot of cool things happening under the hood for the rankings just a quick look what you guys can do is at the top of pv poke you can click preview next season and you can see the new rankings here a lot of new faces in the top contenders but today is about the teams now if you don't know how to build teams this is how you do it it's on pv poke you can go to team builder right here and what you need to do, my advice to you, is utilize this advanced feature, click on that, and then change scorecard length to 80. This gives you a wider look at more Pokemon that might be used. And you also want to allow Shadow Pokemon to appear in the rankings. That way, if you put something like Machamp in and you hit Rate Team, what it'll do is it'll give you a long list of all the Pokemon the hard circles are you lose that battle to that Pokemon, right? Against a Claude Sire, you're doing all resisted damage. And then the X's are you win, right? It's a, it's a generalized a combination of multiple shielding scenarios, but the give and take is circles are bad, X's are good, right? It gives you uh, your potential threat, so Pokemon you really got to look out for. And then it also gives you some potential alternatives, Pokemon to add to your team. This is at the basics of team building on PV Poke. Uh, it's built for teams of six Pokemon, but we're going to be utilizing it for teams of three. So, first team. Tell you what, I was talking down about Gastrodon because it didn't have, it has the Body Slam nerf. But after like really starting to dig in, Gastrodon is just putting in way too much work. So much so, I think it's going to be the flavor of the month for quite a while, which is why I think we're going to see some core breakers come out. But first team here is going to be utilizing three kind of new Pokemon in the meta. It's going to be a Jumpluff lead with a Gastrodon anchor and a Licky Licky safe swap there. Now your Licky Licky could have a different moveset. I just went straight for Shadow Ball. So we have that fighter pressure, right, with Shadow Ball, depending on the fighter you face. Obviously, if it resists it, like Pangoro, for example, it's not going to be as good. But you still have Body Slam Spam. Now what we have here is a very nice coverage. And what this is going to be is the coverage of X's and O's. So Claude Sire does well against Jumpluff, um, or Carbink and Claude Sire do well against Jumpluff, where Gastrodon locks those two down. This is what we call a core, right? A lead and an anchor. They are the core of the team. And Licky Licky, while it has a lot of circles, there are a lot of neutral matchups where if it gets ahead on energy, it might be able to put some pressure on the shielding scenario there. So that's what we're looking. We're trying to use all new Pokemon, right? I'm not trying to go to old meta stuff. I'm trying to use new stuff um, to try to have fun. Our potential threats, this is what kind of surprised me. Uh, potential threats is a Pokemon you're not going to see. Uh, well, actually, you might see Cradilly, uh, but Cradilly, Lilip, and Shadow Cradilly. Now, what this doesn't tell you is you also got to think about your core and what could core break that. And this is what we're going to have with later teams. Uh, core breakers are going to be very common this season, especially if we have cores um, going to a flyer and a water or flyer and a mud boy, right? So Gastrodon Jumpluff, a core breaker there is going to be something like a bomb of snow, right? You have the powder snow to absolutely destroy Jumpluff and you have weather ball or energy ball to destroy Gastrodon while resisting mud slaps. So there's going to be some core breakers out there. The meta is going to be shifting, but this first team looks pretty strong. Jumpluff obviously is going to be one of the top contending flyers. If we head back to here, we look at the rankings. If we take a look at our flying type Pokemon this season, Mandibuzz and Jumpluff are the top two, right? Before it was like Gligar and Skarmory and uh, Talonflame. Now it's Mandibuzz, Jumpluff, and actually Moltres. Galarian Moltres makes it up here. If you're lucky enough to have that Pokemon, Sucker Punch got an update. It is ranked 69 on PvP Poke. Uh, also Togetic, do not sleep on that. 
and then Talonflame and Dragonite. Those are going to be our top flyers this season. I wouldn't be surprised if we still see Skarmory's out there uh, because of how strong it is just with its typing alone against a lot of the meta that we see. Don't sleep on Gligar. It's still going to be interesting. It does have Fury Cutter instead of Wing Attack this time. Um, but yeah, Wing Attack got nerfed if you guys were wondering. Uh, that's why a lot of these flyers are just down in the, down in the dirt. Ironically, they got their wings clipped. Uh, because Sky Attack and Wing Attack both got nerfed, which is why Mandibuzz and Jumpluff are up there at the top. So that's team number one. It's going to be the uh, Jumpluff, Gastrodon, and Licky Licky. And I just want you guys to look. This is just ridiculous. Look at Gastrodon's matchups. Remember, X's are good, right? Just, there's so many X's. There's so many. And the things that you lose against, right? A Trevenant, a Whimsicott, uh, a Jumpluff, right? Mirror and Mandibuzz. Jumpluff can do pretty well against, right? Even the Mandibuzz, even though it's technically a losing matchup, you can still do at least neutral damage there where it's not as close as you think it's, or it's not as dominant as you think it's going to be, right? If we're looking at the one shield scenario, right? Both trainers just shield once. Mandibuzz gets down to 34 HP, right? It's, it's extremely low bottom, like 10%, 20% right there. Um of its health points. So that's still good in a matchup where you are taking super effective damage from your enemy while you can still do neutral. Um, and you could you could be a very sneaky player and go for Dazzling Gleam, but unfortunately it looks like you still lose the matchup. It just goes to 12 instead. So just watch out for that. Acrobatics, I'm curious to see about that one. What are we going here? Yeah, Acrobatics does... 31%, so not as much. But you guys get the picture just because this is a bad matchup um, in terms of typing, right? Flying against grass, um, it's still decent for the outcome for you, right? And then Gastrodon is just shredding apart so many Pokemon, it's ridiculous. And then Licky Licky, I think, will take people by surprise with how spammy it could potentially be with that Shadow Ball and then the Body Slam baits, right? Okay, so that's team. Number one, let me know your guys' thoughts on which team is you guys' favor. We got three today to be talking about. All new Pokemon, I'm going to try to. All new Pokemon. Obviously, I can't cover all of them, right? I only have three slots or nine slots total to build teams, but don't worry, there are going to be more teams in the future. So, team number two. Let's see, where did... Oh, did I lose it? Ah, oh, here it is. Team number two is going to be Clonsire, Abomasnow, and Pangoro. Remember I mentioned earlier, Abomasnow looks to have some potential to core break some teams because of the, the flight to Gastrodon meta and the flight to Jumpluff meta because they're being the top flyer and the top water um, right up in there, right? Gastrodon, I know for alligators go too, so that, that can do well, but you guys get the picture. Abomasnow can core break some stuff. So we're going to utilize a Claude Sire lead here. Claude Sire is the number one Pokemon this season in the meta. Um, it has the stats, uh, it has the bulk, it has the move set, it has, yeah, it's got it's got a great move set. It's exactly what you want. It's like kind of like the new Reggie Steel in a way, without having the fighting weakness because you have that poison typing, uh, and you still do great against Charmers, right? Uh, so you have the Earthquake coverage, much like Focus Blast on Reggie Steel, and you have the Flying coverage with Stone Edge, much like Zap Cannon on Reggie Steel. It's not a one-for-one -one swap, but they fulfill similar roles, right? Um, so let's see, we go back to this team. So we got a Claude Sire. We got an Abomasnow Anchor. This is gonna be our core right here. They do a great job at covering each other's weaknesses. So Claude Sire, or Abomasnow is very weak to stuff like Clefable and Pangoro, but Claude Sire does pretty well in those matchups because of its typing and its bulk. For Alligator could potentially core break right there just because of how much raw damage it's doing, but it's also very glassy. So a Stone Edge hitting it, obviously an Energy Ball hitting it is gonna do a lot of work. Now. This is where something sneaky is going to come in and you guys are going to you guys are going to be thinking twice anytime you see a Pangoro. We're going to utilize it as a safe swap. This does two things for us. Uh, firstly, if there is a fighter back there, like a Machamp or a Charmer, a Fairy back there, we're just going to get it out onto the field, right? We want Claude Sire to be bulking most of that damage. We're going to get it out onto the field, and we're going to try to do a lot of neutral damage in those situations. But what's also interesting is Claude Sire lead 
right, does pretty well against most flyers. You have Poison Sting and Stone Edge. It's very spammy. You can do a lot of super effective damage. Talonflame, near one shot, right? Jump Bluff, massive health. Mandibus, massive health. So Pangoro is something that baits out flyer, flyers as well. And specifically, I'm looking to bait out those Talon Flames because Talon Flame is, is a monster against Abomasnow. So we want to bait that out. Now, what we're looking at here is the move set. This is very sneaky. We got Karate Chop and Close Combat and Night Slash. Karate Chop got an upgrade. It is it is meta, right? Counter's gone. Close Combat is going to be what you want to have. But Night Slash could be swapped out for Rock Slide. Yep. You could go a Karate Chop Rock Slide. Even though Rock Slide got nerfed, it's about that surprise coverage with a Claude Sire swap or a Claude Sire lead odds are when you swap out in Pangoro if you lose lead so let's say a Gastrodon for example odds are you see something like a Jump Pluff or a Talonflame come right in right if Gastrodon lead one of those two is coming in right away Pangoro is going to be able to surprise them so let's take a look uh, I saw Talonflame down here earlier there it is Pangoro here can flip that matchup. Look at this. Karate Chop and Rock Slide. It wins all shielding. Yeah, you're like, oh, yes, indeed. It wins all shielding scenarios because Rock Slide does 96.9%. It is absolutely beautiful in the spam. I don't think you're ready for the spam that th th that this thing can do. It's at by the time Talonflame gets to one fly, Pangoro is at one and a half rock slides, right? That's just that's just crazy. If we look at the two shields, obviously it's going to be closer, right? This is going to come down to IVs, but the whole point, the whole point, everyone, is to bait to bait it out, right? We want a bomb of snow lurking in the back. We want a bomb of snow to be core breaking those jump pluff gashered on teams. We want Pangoro to put the pressure on in the mid game and surprise people. Um, so let's see, where's the uh, where's the jump pluff here? There it is. So the jump pluff matchup, obviously, it's going to be tough. Like you're just going to get deleted. Um, but Rock Slide can do 38%. Whereas before you're doing Night Slash which is uh, not going to be as much, and close combat's not going to be. Like, close combat, right, 27%. And if we go Night Slash, it's going to do 22%. Right? Close combat just hits that hard. But the point is, Rock Slide can really put in some hurt if they're not aware. So in the zero, let's see, the zero shields right here, you're ahead on energy. Rock Slide's going to get the Jump Pluff to, you're going to get it to about 50%. And that's if Jump Pluff doesn't want to store some a little bit of extra and we'll, we'll just get the farm down there. But you guys get the point. Two shields though, you're not going anywhere. The fairy wind is doing double super effective. So this is not a situation where Pangoro is going to be flipping the talent, like the talent flame matchup where it can flip it. Fairy wind's going to be shredding you apart because you are fighting dark. Um, so yeah, don't jump luffs come in. You're just trying to chip away health. And then depending on what the lead was, if it was a Gastrodon, for example, um, you might be able to just come in with a bomb of snow and do an aggressive farm down because whatever they have in the back needs to protect them against um, against grass type Pokemon. And with that extra energy, if it's a second flyer, maybe it's a Mandibuzz, right? You're already locked and loaded. You could still come in with Clodsire, to be honest, and just load up on energy because that Gastrodon, um, what you, the Gastrodon doesn't want to see earthquakes either. But you guys get the picture. Pangoro is gonna be a bit sneaky uh, with that rock slide. All right, team number three is gonna be all around Aurorus. I think Aurorus and honestly, Alolan Sandslash look pretty strong this season, much like Obama Snow, uh, where they have that core breaking potential um, or just doing just, just a ton, metric ton of damage, right? So we're gonna have a superior and Aurorus core here. Again, trying to go with as many unique Pokemon as possible. Uh, but I really had to bring in the Claude Sire once again. It's just way too strong this season. So I had to pop that onto the team because our whole goal is Aurorus can just delete 
jump pluffs, right? It can delete jump pluff. It can do really well against other grass type Pokemon. It can do really well against flyers. It has meteor beam, which hits like a truck. Superior is a bulky grass type Pokemon with that aerial ace that helps it out against those fighters, against some of those other grass, obviously does well against the waters. And Claude Sire Safe Swap, our whole goal with that is try to bait out Gastrodons, right? We want to try to bait it out because if there is, in fact, the Jumpluff Gastrodon Core, much like our um, our first team right here, right? Jumpluff and Gastrodon Core looks very, very strong this season. If that core is there, we want to bait it out. And Claude Sire is going to bait out that Gastrodon 100 times out of 10, right? Every If you safe swap a Claude Sire, Gastrodon is going to come out onto the field and start trying to farm. But the great thing is Superior is tanky enough to be able to farm back down have those aerial aces for the jump bluff and then bring in the auroras to start putting in work right so what we look at this team um, we have some great x's and o's here some great coverages not a lot of stuff that's just going to be completely deleting um this team shadow alolan sand or just alolan sand slash and skarmory uh typhlosion as well bronzong maybe there's some core breaking opportunity, um, which is why I said uh, Aurorus is, uh, or, um, Sandslash is also looking good this season for core breaking potentials. But what I didn't want to do is, because you could swap in Aurorus for um, the Alolan Sandslash if you really want to do that. What I'm a little bit concerned about is the amount of Talon Flames we might see, uh, because not only does it do well against Jump Luff, uh, but it can do pretty well against Gastrodon because it, even though it is fire, it has that part flying typing. So I went with Aurorus instead, but you could easily put in Sandslash there. Uh, but Sandslash could do pretty well against this team, but we can still do great damage in that situation because a Frenzy Plant, even in that matchup, does a hefty amount of damage. Um, and then Aurorus' Meteor Beam obviously will like delete that. It'll be fantastic. Um, and yeah, so those are going to be your core breakers. Uh, the coverage looks really solid. Again, Claude Sire is really t is really carrying the team here, much like uh, much like the uh, Gastrodon of this team, right? It's just got so many X's on the board. Where are we at right here? Um, so Claude Sire is doing great. It's a great safe swap. Again, it's trying to bait out Gastrodons. We're looking at this from a meta perspective. How many people are going to be running these new Pokemon? How many people are going to type in on PV Poke? and look at flying, right? And just go with Mandibuzz Jump Luff, right? How many people are gonna do that? How many people are gonna look at water and then go, oh, Gastrodon's meta, I'm gonna use that. We wanna try to play to that. We're gonna try to mind game people into that, which is why I gave you guys two different teams that are like gonna be all over the place. I don't know who would win, right? If I had to face myself, Jump Luff, Gastrodon Licky Licky versus Superior, um, Aurorus Claude Sire, it'd be very interesting how that game comes out because Aurorus could do pretty well. Even against Licky Licky, I know it does have rollout, but the Body Slam's not going to do much damage, and the Shadow Ball is going to do a decent amount, but if I have shields, right, the Powder Snow Weather Balls are really going to add up. So it's anyone's guess who's going to win, but this team does have the positive lead advantage, which is, which is at least beneficial for them. Um, now, if Jump Luff was to run double Mud Boys, if there's a Swampert there as well, then then we're in a bit of trouble, right? Um, but then this team wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, liking any kind of uh, Dragonite or something like that. So you guys get the picture. That is going to be um, the three teams that I'm going to be trying. Hopefully, I, oh, I swapped it around. Um, but it's going to be that Pangoro team. It's going to be the Aurorus team. And it's going to be the Jump Luff Gastrodon Licky Licky team. Now, there's going to be plenty more, right? It's a brand new season. I'm going to be trying all kinds of stuff, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. These teams might not work. The fact that I'm talking about them might mean that just more people bring some counters to them, right? Uh, but they look pretty good nonetheless. I think of the three, uh, my favorite was the Pangoro um, the Pangoro safe swap with Rock Slide because I think I'm going to surprise a lot of flyers with that. A Talon Flame's going to swap. I'm telling you right now, Tal Talon Flame's going to swap in. It's going to get deleted instantly. They are not going to know what's coming. It's going to be fantastic. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, we're the season's kind of starting kicking off soon, so we're going to be cranking up the videos on the channel. And uh, like always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.